I remember on one road march, we were headed up this mountain, and there was a chaplain perched halfway up, reciting Psalm 121. And we all have rucksacks on our back, and we're, um, you know, physically hurting uh, and not wanting to be there, uh, but still have a lot of climb ahead of us. And he's reciting Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Every time I went somewhere else where there were mountains, that that passage of scripture was brought back to my mind. And so God solidified the, his word through very practical uh, experiences in my life in a way that he used the, the physical creation around me to trigger his word back in my heart. Ranger school uh, in the mountains, um, Kosovo in the mountains, Afghanistan in the mountains, and even we were shot down on a mountaintop in Afghanistan and fighting uphill. And I, I remember that, that Bible study, that, that scripture again, uh, from a Bible study hours before. When we got to Afghanistan, I was with the Rangers. And when we were there, I saw what I would call a revival in, in the platoon. Um, the chaplain was really active. He was there all the time. We got involved in a firefight there that several of the guys were killed. Um, but still, I felt like that, that God was right in the middle of that with me. What came out of the combat experience uh, was that uh, it caused me to withdraw from my personal relationships, my tight personal relationships with my family and with my wife. It caused me to want to distance myself from them because I didn't want them to, to be a part of what, I, what I'd seen and done. I was ready to sever my relationship with the whole world by way of suicide. More than one point in time, I, uh, I sat alone with a pistol that my rangers had given to me as a gift. But I held that pistol uh, alone, thinking about using it on myself. And it was only thinking about what I would leave behind as a legacy, as a father and a husband, and knowing that I would make my wife and my son's lives much worse. Then I began to resort to just um, dreaming and fantasizing about death because it gave me comfort. And that's a completely morbid perspective, um, unhealthy and sinful, um, but that, that's where I was. And so the VA uh, gave me a lot of education about what PTSD was, what the symptoms were. I still had individual treatment was really good for me to understand from, from, a, from, a, from a mental perspective what I was going through and how to recognize signs and how to defeat some of the symptoms or at least cope with some of the symptoms. But for me as a Christian, there were still some things missing. I reached a point in my marriage that um, in my life that it was either to walk down that road or to make a change. We started a PTSD small group at our church, which gave me the spir spiritual aspect of exploring these trauma traumas and how to make sense of them uh, through scripture and through relating to people in the Bible and praying through it and talking through it with other people um, from a Christian perspective. You look back on 10 years of marriage now and we've got three kids and another one on the way and she's just been tremendous throughout. And uh, The Word of God has come alive um, for me every day with with even greater importance every day with new examples and giving me also a path to to uh, to recovery as well. Well, for individuals who are uh, feeling called to, to serve in ministry to those who uh, in our military, um, I think it's easy for a person to say, I'm, I'm not ready for that. What could I bring to that fight? And I think the answer is that if you're being called to that fight, you just bring whatever you have. That to look what's in look what's in your hands, and look what's in your basket of, of tools, and and use them, uh, however you're being led.